over generations, this same power that I'm going to reveal at the end of this video has been capturing the attention of thousands of people. And many of them, many people were not even aware of it. But these voices, when you look back now from what is happening in the Gen Z generation and go back, you can connect the dots. But right now it is more, more, more powerful than ever. A term that you're going to be hearing more and more about. And watch out for this, it's starting to be heard in Kenya by the Gen Z's. It is we the people, we the people, we the people. We want a government for we the people. We want we the people to rule the world. And this is very, very important because the time of the old leadership is over because it was not for the people. It was for a, a few, a few controllers of this world. And that is coming to an end. And in some parts, it's come to an end. And I think if you, those people come across this message, they will know that their time is over. The time is over and things are being dismantled. Quickly, quickly, quickly. On our watch, on our watch. And these are exciting times, exciting times. Thank you, Gen Z. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hello and welcome to African Living Abroad. I am Jamhuri and I'm here to share my international experiences, build bridges between cultures with the hope of making the world a better place. I am a social observer, an interpreter of social events, a commentator and a storyteller. Today, I'm going to reveal to you the power behind the Gen Z movement because this power has a name to it. I know that the Gen Zs are going about their revolution with a lot of power, with a lot of conviction, and they may not know what is exactly behind their drive. They might think it's a political, their political uh, uh, evaluation of the country and it's catching up all over the world, all over Africa, which started in Kenya. And once the Gen Z's were captured by this power, there is no going back, no matter what. It is like a gene that has been let out of, a, out of the bottle and the gene cannot be put back. And this gene wants to put the master back in the bottle okay, in replacement of its place. That is how powerful this, this power is behind the Gen Z's. The Gen Z generation right now, or maybe gradually, maybe between 2021, because that's when a great change happened. And we can see the trend that slowly happened during the pandemic times, okay, that there were two kinds of people people that were for that plan and they could not be convinced otherwise. And people that were against that plan who understood that it was a huge scam, a huge plan, and the two could not mix. Whether you, whatever you are convinced about, you cannot be convinced to believe otherwise. And this kind of conviction has morphed into what we're seeing today in the world. Because during this time, people understood things that when, once you understand them, you cannot undo them. There are things people have seen that once you have seen them, you cannot unsee them. Once you have heard them, you cannot unhear them. And so, and it becomes a part of you. And it is very, very real. And there is no going back. And it has a purpose for the world today. And so I would like to say to the Gen Z's who like to uh, blame the older generations about not going enough, far enough with their political revolutions. And I'm talking to the Gen Z's of Kenya. And maybe it will catch on with the Gen Z's in Africa and throughout the world. You see, changes had been happening gradually. And 
people of older generations also saw that there was things wrong in their countries politically. I don't think that we have a history of of citizens loving their 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 politicians. And we can talk about this because there there is evidence of assassinations of people who spoke against the status quo, the rulership of the country at that time. And we can say that over generations, this same power that I'm going to reveal at the end of this video has been capturing the attention of thousands of people. And many of them, many people were not even aware of it. But these voices, when you look back now from what is happening in the Gen Z generation and go back, you can connect the dots. But right now it is more, more, more powerful than ever. So I'm going to reveal a couple of steps that has led the Gen Z right now to bring to fruition the effects of that power that has captured them. And one of them is the Gen Z were born at a time when the internet was available to many, many of them. And they were able to see and compare their country with other countries. They were able to see what the older generations did not see. See, the old generations, they relied on television and newspapers and whatever was told to them and their systems of control at that time, the dictatorships, and also through that, there was a lot of fear and people knew what they were told and believed what they were told. But now the Gen Z's, they have the power of the cell phone or the mobile phone and they have the freedom, total freedom to research what they want to know. And they are con connected internationally. Number two, I think we can all agree that Time has, uh, things have been changing very, very fast. And this uh, Gen Z is connected, very highly connected in social media with their peers all over the world, which the older generations could not even dream about. And because of this, they are smarter than their parents. They can see other things. They understand things better than their parents. And even the parents of today, even those that are in their 50s, if they're not very careful and catch up to, to try to catch up with what their kids know and to be part of social media, okay? Like uh, Instagram, Twitter, or X, uh, YouTube, Facebook, on uh, TikTok, that is where life is happening these days. And if the older generations keep uh, controlling the young people, trying to, to put them into... Uh, the place they grew up in, it's never going to happen. So if you're a smart parent, is you need to catch up with your children and learn what they're learning and uh, listen to their opinions. Because I think this is number three. Number three, today's young people, the Gen Z's, are our teachers. They are the teachers of their parents as well. I am a parent of, a Gen, Z, of Gen Z's. And there are so many ways that my kids have taught me a lot of things. And in the beginning, I was very, very rigid. But I've had to say, no way. There's no way my kids are going to know so much more than me. I am not a, I am an intelligent woman. And thank God, I'm very curious about so many things in the world. And I'm doing a YouTube videos uh, as a parent of the Gen Z's. I love it. And I'm discovering so much so... If we are very watchful and perceptive, we will see that our children are our teachers and they sharp, sharpen us. And many of us grew up in a generation where uh, younger people were controlled and told to shut up. They had no place in society to contribute. But right now they have, they have knowledge to contribute. They have experiences to, uh, to contribute. They have knowledge from other nations, other countries, other worlds. So it's the role of the parents of the Gen Z's to be really alert right now and catch up as soon as possible. Number four. Number four. The Gen Z's. The Gen Z's have understood who rules the world, who rules the world. We used to think that our presidents rule the world. We used to think that our governments rule the world. But we have understood that, no, it's not them. 
There are systems that rule our presidents and our presidents do their bidding. And that's why we don't have uh, the fulfillment of their promises at their point of election. Okay, they can promise so much, but they are basically puppets, puppets of a bigger, a bigger power. Okay, so even though our presidents have wanted to do great things for the country, they were not allowed to do that if they're going to step out of the plan of the plan and that's why we go back and look at african presidents that have been assassinated because they did not get in line they did not get in line with their puppeteer and this is a time where we have courage to talk about this because now it's commonplace it's no more hush hush like it used to be and we're called to have courage and as we know, courage and to speak all these things is going to cost us something. It might cost us something. But I think we are past that point. We are not going to be manipulated anymore. We are not going to be shut up anymore. Once a voice has opened, like that gene that you can put in the bottle, you cannot shut up. You cannot shut up. And um, so they have understood the underlying systems in this world that are controlling i would talk about africa and why africa does not rise and i did a video in 2021 and some things were revealed to me why africa could not fly even though africa wanted so much to soar it couldn't it was like a bird whose wings had been clipped and i all of a sudden i understood the powers behind the the <laughs> the stagnation of africa that uh, video I will connect to this at the end, somewhere up here or somewhere here. Please watch it. Because in order for Africa to rise and to fly, because right now Africa is going through the birth pains, okay? The birth pains of her freedom. And uh, before freedom comes, before order comes to Africa, it might, his spiritual teachers like to say, the old has to be gotten rid of. Okay, and when the old system is get, getting rid of, being gotten rid of, there is chaos. There's going to be chaos. You ask mothers before they give birth to a child, what kind of chaos they go through in their whole body, the pain, and then a child is born. Okay, and everything goes further from there. So, uh, oof, it's a hot, very hot day today. And... So they've understood that. And once they've understood that, they want to take back their freedom. They want to take back their continent, the African youth. And it is really, it is time. The time is here. There is no stopping it. And if you understand this message, I would like you to please comment so that the Gen Z's and their parents and everybody can understand what I'm talking about. It's not nonsense. Okay, it is for real. So there's no taking, uh, taking this back. And I think that President Ruto is starting to do the right thing. You cannot resist this movement. You, can, you need to work with the people. And I hope that this kind of uh, power that is over the Gen Z's, that it also, I pray that it goes over and touches President Ruto and that his eyes open up and see the game. I think he knows the game. He might be helpless, but you are covered. You are covered by this power that is taking over Africa. And I think where Africa is going, and I th is where Mali has gone, where Niger has gone, where Burkina Faso has gone, that is where we are heading. That's where we are heading. And we're getting rid of the colonial system, the neo-colonial system, or the old one that has never left. It never truly left. And so, that is where we are heading and when the gen c's have understood this they are resisting 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 with all they've got now are you ready are you ready are you ready for the great reveal the name of this powerful powerful uh, movement okay or the power behind this movement you know lean in closer lean in closer lean in closer and i think that many of you already have a clue one two three it's called the great awakening the great awakening and i'm going to explain this okay and it has nothing to do with christianity okay christianity might have 
it is there in all scriptures, but it's not as we have been taught, okay? You see, the last 2,000 years, we have been living in an age where things were hidden. And that's why, let's say, the past generations, they were aware that things were wrong with the governance of the world. And they could not put their finger on it, you know, like what, what was going on. But that time has passed and the pandemic was a, a great catalyst for this because we were heading towards it and it has happened now. And now we're living in the age of revelation, okay, revelation. And revelation with revelation with knowledge that I was uh, talking about earlier comes a revelation, a veil is lifted up so that people uh, can see so much can see who was ruling the world, can see the people in the shadows, can see um, the powers that were destroying the world and what the youth have, know, uh, have known now. And it's not only the youth that know this, as I said before, um, this awakening has been happening uh, slowly and slowly over the decades before. But now it is going faster and faster and people are beginning to understand and to do the math and everything is crystal clear. And once you understand, you cannot go back. See, this is a forward force that is heading into uh, the future of humanity that is called the golden age. And this golden age, this old system will be uh, done with. And it's right now it's the undoing of those systems, like I said, like in Mali, Nigeria, Burkina Faso, the shackles of uh, the slavery in the world are falling and you don't, <laughs> you have to take it, okay? You, you get the revelation and then you know what to do. And I noticed that for me, my voice, one of the number one thing, by the way, is self-empowerment, personal power, that your power and a personal identity first. You want to understand who you are really and what is your purpose on this world and what is it that you need to do and then your 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 calling comes to you and you gotta overcome your fear it costs so much so much and then you step into it so there are many steps to get there and i think the young people are knowing who they are they're understanding who they are and their voice is calling them and their voices are opening up and for me, literally, I used to do videos that are sweet, sweet, sweet. But from 2021, I realized my, my mission is much bigger. And you could actually feel, and I think YouTubers know that, this feeling in your throat that there's a voice that wants to come out. Something needs, needs to be given birth. And I want to say that this is a whole spiritual realm, actually. And when we talk about the spiritual realm, we're not talking about the church kind of thing. It is a whole a different because it's, it's affecting every, every part of your life. And you're feeling a connection between you and the divine. And the middleman is done over with, you know. So that's why when you see churches are falling, church leaders are falling. I mean, those are old systems. And those that have ears to hear will hear and understand. Those that have eyes to see will see and understand it. And so we will keep going forward. We will keep, keep doing what we know we're gonna do here and uh gen c's now you have a name for what you are doing and um i think you re if you resonate with my message please comment comment and share it like it and uh, let's converse uh, more and i thank you so much for having the courage to understand who you are and what what the difference is between the light and the darkness the works of the darkness and of the light and, and now I'm f the one when I mean sp spiritual sense is that uh, whatever you do is interpreted from a divine perspective. And so that's why even in my video here, I'm talking about it like the, the worlds that are merging together. And we were going to enter into a, the, the, into a place where we see things more in a spiritual eyes, you know, with spiritual eyes, you know. And so I have a different... Uh, uh, YouTube channel that deals with spiritual things only. But I realize that the more I talk about social issues, I feel that it, it touches on the spiritual. And at some point, I wanted to give up this channel so I can concentrate on, on that. So I'm seeing a movement also that some things are moving from, from one area to another.
I think you understand this message. And I'll end, end here for today. And I want to say thank you so much. Thank you.